Hi everyone, welcome back. I have finished making the cassette sleeves for the next cassette that's coming out on Natural Expressions. I think I've got about 85 printed up here. I've got them all foiled, got them creased. I'm well ahead of schedule for literally the first time ever with these releases. The cassette should actually arrive today. I can start to get this planned for a release, which is nice. But today we're going to print a poster to accompany this release. So this is the design here. You can see it's kind of similar to, to the cassette release. This is just a test print. This is just printed on the inkjet on some white paper. Now you can see with the cassette sleeves, I've done it a bit differently and I've printed it actually on black paper. So this is Fedragoni Blender Lux, I think this is a black matte paper. It's really nice. I got it in a in a sample and it's got such a nice texture to it that yeah, I just thought I, I really want to use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, print on this because I've got some spare sheets left over. So I'm going to do an A3 poster print. I thought it'd just be cool to kind of show you the process of what I go through in exposing the screen and some of the things that I've learned along the way screen printing at home. It's important to just kind of plan ahead and, and think about what you're actually printing. So this is on black paper and I'm going to be printing it with white ink. Now you want white ink to be as opaque as possible because especially when you're printing against black, if you've got like a, a translucent white, if maybe you've kind of thinned it down with screen printing medium, it will just not have as much contrast. It won't have that pop, that white pop, which is really nice when you are screen printing white ink. And it will just kind of go like a gray so what you want to do if you're printing white, you want to use as coarse of a mesh as possible. Now, if this was a little bit more of a, of a blockier design, if it didn't have so many kind of like fine lines, I would probably have gone with, you know, like a 40 or 45 T mesh. So something really nice and coarse that is going to let through as much ink as possible. And I won't need to thin the white ink down so much because I know that it's not going to get clogged in the screen. But this is actually quite detailed. It's got a lot of fine lines, a lot of fine details. So I'm going to be using a 65T mesh screen. Previously when I was screen printing, I always just went for the highest mesh screen and I would have thought that like a 90 or a 120T mesh screen would have been really good for this um, because it's got lots of fine details um, and the lines, I want them to be all nice and crisp. But actually you want to basically go with as coarse of a mesh as possible that you can get away with. The coarse of the mesh it just means the easier it is going to be to let as much ink through. So you're going to get nice opaque colors, but also things like it's just going to be less likely to dry in the screen and clog up. You can so easily clog up a 90 or a 120T mesh screen, especially when you're printing with white, because white just seems to dry much, much quicker. And also, as I keep saying, you know, you don't want your white to be translucent. So you don't really want to use too much screen printing medium mixed with your acrylic inks. So again, the screen printing medium is what stops it from drying in your screen quicker. And also it just makes your job much easier when it comes to reclaiming your screen. It's much easier to wash out the emulsion on a nice coarse mesh. You can just blow it out with your pressure washer much easier than a really fine mesh. So yeah, just basically try and you know plan ahead and just think, what is the coarsest mesh that I can get away with with a design like this? If you're printing half tones and those type of things, and yeah, you need to go to like 1790 or 120 T meshes, but this we're gonna do 65. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. Let's cut our screen and we'll get it dried. So I've closed the curtains a little bit. Um, I don't want too much light getting on the screen. It's not really super sunny, so you don't have to worry about it too much if you're indoors. But I mean, for the sake of the video, I'm keeping the curtains open a little bit. But if you're doing it at home, just always try and keep the curtains closed. I've got my uh, step wedge test and I put this on every screen because I just want to make sure that the exposure is right. And I'm slowly kind of building up a spreadsheet of exposure times because what you'll find is that different meshes hold different amounts of emulsion so a coarse mesh will hold more emulsion so therefore it will need a longer exposure time now another thing as well that i did slightly realize um, my fan originally on my uh, exposure unit wasn't actually working and it resulted in a few of the strips of leds on this uh, uv LED to actually burn out. And as I was exposing the screens, I kind of, I slightly realized that my exposure times, I needed to expose it longer and longer. 
and stuff wasn't exposing properly. So I had a quick look when I was exposing it one time and I realized that actually about three or four of these LED rows have actually burnt out and it's because my fan wasn't working. So now I just bought this nice big fan that I just stick on top of this heatsink. It keeps it nice and cool, so I shouldn't have any issues with it. But this has actually reduced the output of it. It's, it's no longer 200 watts, so it does actually need a longer exposure time now. And this is why I just want to start building up a spreadsheet with step wedge results. And I just make notes on what mesh it was, um, how much emulsion I had on it, if fine details come out and things like that. So yeah, I recommend just keeping a log of this. I don't really screen print that often. So it's, you know, it's like a few months between every single screen, screen print, even longer sometimes. If I don't keep a log of it and I come back, I've got no idea how long I need to expose these things for. So yeah, keep a log, it can be very, very helpful. So as you can see, I've got the screen now placed Correctly, and I've got this USB cable which just creates a channel for the air to be sucked out. I've got my vacuum pump, my gas vacuum pump is really nice, uh, good quality. If you can find secondhand gas motors, I'd recommend getting them. Uh, they're often used for dentists, so if you've got any local dentists that are going out of business, uh, you can really get some good bargains. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run, it will suck out all of the air. It would create a nice good contact between the film positive and the screen. And then I'll lift it up and then we will stick on the exposed unit. Make sure you've got eye protection. Uh, if you're going to be in the, in the room while you're doing this, my design of this exposure unit is mobile. So it's not a contained unit. So obviously UV is going to be kind of leaking into this room. So I just make sure that I wear eye protection and I put my hood on. Sometimes I also put a scarf just to cover my face. This will hurt your eyes if you do stare at it. Okay, you probably can't hear me because the motor's on, but you can see it's made nice contact between the uh, film positive, the glass, and the screen. So now it's ready to lift up. So I've got the stopwatch running. The screen has been exposed. I'm now in my bathroom. Again, you want to keep it nice and dark. Got the curtains closed. Uh, this is kind of like my washout booth setup. It's just a curtain with two hooks up in the ceiling. And I can just hook my screen up and then I can just wash it out. Now also I've got a little LED light that I put on on the back. So it's kind of like a backlit washout booth so you can see all the fine details when you're washing it out. So you go, you can see it's really nice. You can see all the detail that you're washing out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, soak it and I'll leave it for a few minutes just to let the emotion start to break down from the water and then we'll just slowly wash it out and hopefully it will have expired okay. So what I do first of all, and it's why I really like the step wedge test, is that is the first thing that I wash out. So if I'm washing it out and I can see that it's, you know, the, the step test is breaking down all the way to like one or two, I know that it's you know, not really well exposed. And I know that I've got to be really careful when I'm washing out the actual design. If it only washes out, you know, to like 10, for instance, that I know that it's probably overexposed. And I know that, you know, there is light leaking in this room. I want to be quick and I want to maybe use a little bit more pressure with the, with the shower head and just wash out the details as quickly as possible. I also might think about using a sponge as well to wipe away as much as I can, just, quickly as possible to just break it down. So that's why I like using the, the step wedge test in, in really all of my exposures. So we've finished exposing it and I've just coated the edges in some extra emulsion just to seal up any uh, bits that weren't covered in emulsion on the first coat. And now I'm just doing a quick post cure. This bit doesn't really have to be too scientific. I just leave it on for like a few minutes. You wanna make sure that the emulsion is fully cured because when you're using inks and things like that, they can get into the emulsion uh, and it can just result in it being harder to wash out. So I'm happy with how this come out. I just had one little spot up here that didn't seem to expose and I just painted a little bit of emulsion on it. But this is looking good. So let's stick it on the table and let's do a test print. So 
So before you start printing, always make sure that you've got everything set up. I still make this mistake myself. I get excited and I start printing straight away, realize that um, I haven't got any tissues set aside. I haven't got even my paper cut. Um, so yeah, just make sure you've got everything. Spatula for mixing things. You've obviously got your squeegee, you've got your ink, you've got your tissues, you've got your paper ready to go. I've just got some white A3 paper. This is what I'm gonna be using just to do the test prints, just to get the ink flowing through the screen. Um, and then once it's printing nice and crisply, I will then switch over to the to the black paper. It's quite expensive, the black paper, so I don't really want to do test prints with that. Always use just your cheap throwaway paper for doing test prints. Your first print through the screen will probably never print 100% perfectly. So yeah, don't waste your good paper straight away. So I am really happy with how that come out. That is looking absolutely perfect. And I've got to print the rest now. I've got to be quick because the white ink will dry really quickly. Trimmed it down. There we go. Poster's done. It was actually a really nice, quick and easy print. Uh, I know you're thinking I'm not wearing gloves because I think my, my work is that valuable, uh, but this paper will get absolutely every single fingerprint stuck on it and it will get every single mark. You've got to be really careful with this paper. Uh, even when I was kind of trimming it, you get scuff marks on it, which isn't really too good. Um, but yeah, I really love this paper. It's the way it feels and the, and the way it looks, it's got such a nice matte texture to it. The white is nice and opaque. I did two coats. And I think that I probably could have actually have used less screen printing medium and gone with a slightly more opaque ink, but it's a, it's got a really nice pop to it. And I know that maybe to most people, it probably doesn't look that different. If you look at, this is the inkjet version, which is printed on white. This is the screen printed version, which is printed on black. Maybe in the camera side by side, you can't really see the difference. When I'm looking at them, when they're on the wall, I don't know, it's just something about screen printing. I just love the way that it looks. When you get up close, it's just got a really nice kind of tactile texture to it, to the ink, and you touch it as well. It just, yeah, I just really love screen printing stuff. When you just put ink down on paper and you just lift up that screen and you see it printed, especially when it's your own work as well, um, it's just so rewarding. I only printed 10 copies. I'm gonna be giving some away in some cassette bundles when the cassette is released. And I'll also be putting a few copies up on my Etsy page. If you're interested in this, the link will be in the description. If you've got any more questions about screen printing or anything, just let me know in the comments. I got some bits and pieces that I'm working on. Uh, we've got a, another cassette release that I need to start working on. Uh, I'm still trying to do the coolants for the CNC, which hopefully I will be able to finish designing shortly. And I'm actually also going to be going on a trip soon. So we're going to be doing some more photography videos with the Mami Art RZ67, which I'm sure some of you are gonna be excited about because I still get comments even now on the videos that I post asking me when I'm gonna start doing photography again. 2021, we are gonna be doing some more uh, photography videos, which I'm excited about. That's it for today. Remember to like and subscribe. It really does help grow the channel uh, and tell me the kind of content that you like to see. But that is it. I hope you all have a good week and I'll catch you all later.